Monday's schedule is overflowing with great matches, especially on the women's side where all eight round of 16 matches will be played. Simona Halep, photo by Chrysline Kayo, copyright at Sport Vision. The men's bottom half of the draw will just be completing their third round matches today, so the women will be a full round ahead when play concludes this evening. While there are many younger players well worth your attention on Monday, the biggest stories to follow will be veterans who continue to amaze in the twilight of their careers, 38-year-old Venus Williams, 37-year-old Roger Federer, and 36-year-old David Ferrer. Simona Halep, 2, vs Venus Williams in bed from Getty Images This is a rematch from January's Australian Open, which was also a fourth-round match. Halep prevailed in straight sets on that day, as she has the last three times they've met. In fact, Venus has not won more than three games in any set of those matches. Venus did claim the other three matches they've played, though her last win came in 2013. As impressive as Venus's play has been this month, especially considering she's been much less than 100% physically, Halep is just not a good matchup for her. Venus's serve and ground strokes are not as powerful these days, and Simona is too solid off the ground and too quick around the court. However, Halep herself is far from 100%. She was hampered by a knee injury in her third round match yesterday, and needed three sets to survive against the 93rd ranked player in the world. Simona spent nearly three hours on court yesterday, while Venus dropped just four games in a much quicker victory. And you know the crowd will be fully behind the American today. If Venus is ever going to defeat Halep again, this may be her best shot. Francis Tiafo, 28 vs. David Ferrer, WC, embed from Getty Images watching David Ferrer outcompete Sasha Zarev on Saturday night, and seeing how much he still wants to win just mere weeks ahead of retiring from the sport was a thing of beauty. His upset of the second seed is even more impressive considering David had not won back-to-back -back matches yet this year. Does he have another upset left in him? It would seem unlikely under normal conditions, but much like the women's match of the day, the player on the other side of the net may not be 100% healthy. Francis Tiafo appeared to be dealing with stomach issues in his second round match on Saturday, and his leg went into a full cramp right after match point. TFO can ill afford to be tired or injured against one of the game's best competitors. Hopefully Francis is good to go, as he's had a full day off to recover. In their first career meeting, the 21-year-old American should be the favorite. Other notable matches on Day 8 Embed from Getty Images Roger Federer, 4, who survived on Saturday despite some very poor play, versus Filip Krinovich, who upset Stan Wawrinka in the last round Petra Kvitova, 3, versus Caroline Garcia, 19. The French woman had a losing record on the year coming into this tournament, but already defeated Victoria Zarenka and Julia Gorges, and is 3-2 lifetime against Kvitova Caroline Wozniacki, 13, versus Sue Weishe, 27, who took out world number one Naomi Osaka on Saturday Kiki Burton's, 7, versus Ash Barty, 13. Barty is vying to enter the top 10 for the first time, as Burton's aims for her debut in the top 5. Burton's is 0-2 against Barty. The next-gen star has got everybody talking at the Miami Open with his latest run. Felix Agaroli Asim, photo by Chrysler Kayo, copyright at Sport Vision, playing in the main drive of Masters 1000 event for the fifth time in his career, rising star Felix Agaroli Asim is a win away from reaching the quarterfinals of the Miami Open. The 18-year-old qualifier continued his recent surge in form on Sunday with a 7-6, 5-6-4, win over Hubert Hurkacz. Another next-generation star who is just over three years older than him saving all three break points he faced during the match. The victory is the latest boost for Agar Ali Asim and his blossoming career. Within the past month he has reached his first ATP final at the Rio Open and stunned top 10 player Stefano Tsitsipas in Indian Wells. At the start of this year I was just outside the top 100, just aiming to squeeze into the top 100 over the next few months.
and then everything went so fast from there and I was able to keep on playing well. The Next Gen star said during an interview with the Tennis Channel. Agar Al-Azim has long been considered a rising star of the sport following his successful junior career. At the age of 14 he won his first main draw match at challenger level at the 2015 Grand B Open in Canada. He is also a former US Open boys champion and currently has four challenger titles to his name. As a result of his latest success in Miami, the teenager will break into the world's top 50 when the rankings are updated next week, becoming the first player born after 2000 to achieve the milestone on the men's tour. After Indian Wells I was close to the top 50, but those last few spots are tough to get. To get it all ready this week is so special, he said. Agar Ali Asim is among a group of young Canadian players making their name on the tour. Denis Shapovalov is the second youngest player in the top 100. Meanwhile, on the women's tour Bianca Andreescu is in the middle of a 10-match winning streak after stunning the draw to win the Indian Wells title. Something that inspires her male compatriot. It goes through my head, obviously, why not? But obviously it's a different level, different things. Agar Ali Asim comments of Andreescu's success. At the same time it gives us a lot of belief. For Dennis, for me see what Bianca did was great. I was super excited as well this week for her. Hopefully I'll be able to repeat something like that. He added. Federer impressed in bed from Getty Images The rise of the Montreal-born player hasn't gone unnoticed by his rivals, particularly 20-time Grand Slam champion Roger Federer. Who compares him to the likes of Rafael Nadal? The two had previously trained together at Federer's base in Dubai. I saw what he has special when I trained in Dubai with him, Federer told Radio Canada. Unfortunately, he injured himself there in training. I like his attitude. For someone who is young like him, it's impressive, we've seen it in the past with Leighton, Hewitt, or Rafael, Nadal, guys who are already mentally strong. I think we can put him a bit in that category. It is the maturity of the world number 57 that has impressed many. Recently saying during an interview with ATPTour.com that he isn't afraid of losing, it is that growing maturity that is aiding his rise in the sport. I think over the weeks you win, you lose, you learn. He said, I think a lot of things got better. My serve, my fitness, finishing the points at the net and being more calm. I've improved a lot. The question remains how great Felix Agar Ali Asim can become. In the history of men's tennis, Miles Ronick is the only Canadian to have ever reached a Grand Slam final at the 2016 Wimbledon Championships. Ronick, who is 28, has won eight ATP titles so far in his career. The way he's able to accelerate the forehand, the backhand in the first ball is something that will be important to him in the future, Federer commented. After, his footwork is excellent too. He even manages to slide on the hard. Agar Ali Asim will play 17th seed Nicolas Basilashvili in the fourth round of the Miami Open on Tuesday. It's a tough day at the office for the world number one in Miami. Novak Djokovic, photo by Chrysler Kayo, copyright at Sport Vision. Top seed Novak Djokovic has secured his 44th main draw win at the Miami Open after downing Argentine world number 83 Federico Del Bona 7-5, 4-6, 6-1, in the third round on Sunday. The world number one came through what was a challenging encounter on the stadium court. Besides the spirited play from an inspired Del Bonis, the Serbian also expressed unhappiness with the conditions, voicing frustration at why the lights weren't turned on as they turned into night. On top of that, he was also bemused by some questionable line calls. Nevertheless, he prevailed by hitting a winner error ratio of 12 to 19. I thought I started well at 5-2, then I had a couple of really bad service games that got him, Dalbonis back into the match Djokovic reflected during an interview with Amazon Prime. Again at 7-5, 3-1, serving with new balls I was playing too passively. 
Credit to him for swinging through the ball from the back of the court, he was dictating the play. I backed up, I was too passive, seeking a record seventh title in Miami, Djokovic didn't have it all his own way. After easing to a 5-2 lead with a very business-like display, the world number one came under a barrage of world-class shots from across the court. Del Bonis, who has previously scored wins over Roger Federer and Andy Murray, hit a series of sensational shots to draw level at 5-5. However, the Argentine was unable to sustain such a high level of play against a player of Djokovic's caliber. In the end it was an error-stricken Del Bonis game that gifted the top seed the 7-5 lead. In the lead, it was evident that perfectionist Djokovic wasn't entirely happy with his performance. Emulating the opening set, in the second he saw a break advantage come and go. This time however, Djokovic's temper got the better of his as he smashed up his racket. Resulting in the umpire issuing him with a code violation. Meanwhile, info at Joe's Morgato, movie camera at Tennis TV. The 15-time Grand Slam champion continued to fight, but he was denied the opportunity to dictate the points. Resulting in Dalbanis snatching the second set to take proceedings into a decider. Facing the prospect of a shock defeat, danger was eventually averted as the expense of a sluggish service game from Dalbanis that guided Djokovic to a 4-1 lead. Unlike earlier in the match, he refused to relinquish his stronghold. Storming to the win against his rapidly tiring opponent. I was nervous towards the end of the second set. The six-time champion admitted afterwards. The first couple of games at the start of the third was crucial I think. Managing to hold, putting myself in front during the match, added slightly more pressure on him. last four games, was the best of the match, Djokovic now has a shot of revenge in his fourth round match against Roberto Bautista got on Tuesday. The player who defeated him at the Doha Open earlier this year, the Spaniard booked his place in the last 16 following a 6-4, 6-4, win over Fabio Fonini earlier in the day. He's in great form and a completely different player from Del Bonis, Djokovic said of Bautista a gut plays really flat, doesn't give you many unforced errors. He's really fit and runs around the court really nicely from both sides, I'm looking forward to it. Obviously I got to play better than tonight, and hopefully I can have a win. He added, in their head-to-head, -head, Djokovic leads 7-2. Polanski suffered a three-set defeat to Andre Rublev in the qualifying round, but is the first, lucky loser, of the tournament, benefiting from fantasy Kokinaki's misfortune. Zimbio.com. The full draw for Australian Open is finally out with the places marked qualifiers, finally filled. At the time the draw was made the final round of qualifying had not been completed, therefore places were marked qualifiers until such players' identities could be determined. Q, Andre Rublev vs. Yen Hsun Lu Malik Jaziri vs. Q, Gosoeda Q, Alexander Bublik vs. 16, Lucas Puig Thomas Burdick vs. Q, Luca Vanni Q, Bjorn Fratongelo vs. Q, Noah Rubin Q, Jurgen Melzer vs. 17, Roger Federer 26, Albert Ramos Vinolas vs. Q, Lucas Lacco Q, Thomas Fabiano vs. Donald Young Q, Francis Tiafo vs. Mikhail Kukushkin Yoshihito Nishioka Versus Q Alex Bolt Daniel Medvedev versus Q Ernesto Escobedo Dmitry Tursunov versus Q Rodik Stepanek Q Riley Opelka versus 11 David Goffin Q Blake Mott versus 18 Richard Gasquet 30 Pablo Carena Busta versus LL Peter Polanski Dennis Estoman versus Q Ivan Dodig Polanski has made the main draw despite losing to Andre Rublev in the qualifying round. Kakinakis was forced to withdraw following an abdominal injury, 